today after uh, revision uh, let us start studying about the compound of phosphorus which is known as a phosphine do you remember the formula for phosphine my dear students ph3 very good phosphine which is ph3 phosphine ph3 let us first understand about the preparations so phosphine can be prepared by the reaction of calcium phosphide with water or dilute hydrochloric acid by reaction of calcium phosphide with water or hcl let me write the equation for you my dear students that ca3 p2 plus 6h2o that gives 3 ca oh twice plus 2 ps3 same way Uh, calcium phosphide when again it reacts with the hydrochloric acid it gives calcium chloride and two molecule of phosphine so this is how we can prepare the phosphine let us now study about the lab preparation of a laboratory preparation let us uh, study about the laboratory preparation of phosphine this preparation my dear students we have already studied in uh, or we have this uh, this reaction we have already studied yesterday it is the reaction of the white phosphorus with concentrated sodium hydroxide solution into the atmosphere of carbon dioxide so in the laboratory it is prepared by the reaction of white phosphorus with NaOH in the atmosphere of co2 let me write the reaction for you my dear students uh, it is a p4 plus 3 NaOH plus 3 H2O that gives PS3 plus 3 NaH2PO2. This compound is known as the sodium hypophosphite. do you know yesterday we have discussed one very special thing about this reaction can any of you tell me what is that disproportionate disproportionate reaction very good it is a disproportionation reaction in which phosphor is oxidized to p plus 1 and the same phosphorus is reduced to p minus 3 so this is how we really understand that the same element undergo both the oxidation as well as reduction and thus we can say it is a disproportionation reaction so due to this disproportionation reaction my dear students the phosphine is produced this is a disproportionation reaction
then uh, next we should uh, know that the properties of uh, phosphine so if you have any doubt in this whatever we have discussed you can ask me but so agar aapko koi doubt hai to aap pooch sakte hain kuch bhi nahi pooch raha hai no doubt very good chaliye fir aage chalte hain let us study the various properties of uh, phosphine uh, before that let Uh, let me give you one more reaction by which we can prepare phosphine uh, suppose if we have ph4i and if we allow this ph4i to react with uh, potassium hydroxide it gives us a uh, potassium iodide and water and phosphine so this is how we we really uh, do the reaction for the phosphine let us uh, learn the various uh, properties of uh, phosphine so first we'll look at the physical properties dear students let's look at the physical property physical properties so first uh, uh, it is inflammable that is what we can write that uh, phosphine is inflammable but uh, so let's say it is inflammable then my dear students we can say uh, it becomes flammable it becomes flammable when there are impurities present into it now what can be the impurities so the various impurities which are possible are p2h4 this is what it is seen as an impurity p2h4 so if there is an impurity of p2h4 or if there is an impurity of p4 vapor then this become inflammable and when it becomes inflammable please remember my dear students when it becomes inflammable uh, sorry when when it becomes flammable it is used as a holmes signal so please remember that generally it does not burn but when it burns it is used as a home signal with some of the impurities present into it now let us study how we can purify it method of purification so my dear students whenever uh, we have or we can find it out we first allow it to absorb into the so ps3 is allowed to react with hi so that we can get ps4i now when it reacts with hi we can say that it behave it behaves like base and as it behaves like a base my dear students it is lewis base because it has got the lone pair and lone pair on it and thus we have got this salt ph4i this ph4i my dear students when we allow this ph4i to react with the uh, base potassium hydroxide it gives us the 
potassium iodide water and this which was an impure this was a ph3 with impurity impurities do not react with hi so here we will get the impurities removed so when it forms ph4i there are no impurities and then only when ph4i is allowed to react with koh we will get ph3 and this ph3 whatever we get is pure ph3 or pure phosphine and this is how my dear students we understand the process of uh, purification of our phosphine now if you have any doubt in this you can ask me or we can move no doubt sir okay no doubt so let's move forward and understand uh, something else now we'll understand some more properties like it is a colorless gas this is what we call we call it as a physical appearance so its physical appearance it is colorless when it comes to the uh, physical state at room temperature we realize that it is gas so we can say it is colorless gas then my dear students we can say that it has got the rotten fish smell so if we really write the order it is a rotten fish order or rotten fish kind of smell that we can have it is highly poisonous please remember that it is highly poisonous so we should avoid breathing in this uh, phosphine it is highly poisonous and it is explosive too it explodes in contact with the traces of oxidizing agent like hno3 cl2 and br2 vapors so that's what we can understand that it is highly poisonous it can explode itself but when when does it when it behaves as an explosive so we can say it is explosive but it is explosive when it comes in contact with explosive nature is when it comes in contact with oxidizing agents so which are the oxidizing agent that makes it uh, explosive these oxidizing agents like so these oxidizing agents are nitric acid it may be cl2 or it may be br2 so when it comes in contact with these substances it becomes you know explosive in nature it is slightly soluble in water so that's what we can mention over here not completely soluble remember it is a slightly soluble in water then uh, we can say the solution of ph3 in water decomposes in presence of light gives red phosphorus hydrogen it gives red phosphorus and hydrogen so uh, let us try to write it if we can write it 
CPS3, when it reacts with uh, water, it gives us P4 and hydrogen. Then what's about oxygen? So this actually takes place in the presence of light, my dear students. We can write four pH three. So we get four, then hydrogen is also produced. And apart from that, we may have some substances like, you know, P2H4 and other products. So there are various other products are also formed due to this. But you just need to remember that when this particular uh, substance it's a it's aqueous solution we can say that it's solution in water this is what it shows the aqueous solution now my dear students this is the important thing that you need to remember that its aqueous solution gives us in the presence of light produces this hydrogen gas and this hydrogen gas or the other phosphines whatever they are produced this compound makes it makes it explosive. So this compounds or when it is added to water, it forms and when the light falls on it, it turns into the substances which are explosive in nature. And that is why being explosive, it is used as in the Holm signal. In the Holm's signal it is used so please remember that its aqueous solution is majorly explosive in nature when the light falls on it it becomes explosive and as it becomes explosive uh, uh, or using the char characteristic of being explosive we can use it into the holmes signal Let us understand the various reactions of PS3 with the copper sulfate and mercury chloride. So let us write the reaction. Reactions with copper sulfate and mercuric chloride. So my dear students, when hello dear students, can you see whatever I am writing on the screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Reaction with yes. copper sulfate and mercury chloride. So uh, let me write the reaction for you. We have 3 CuSO4 that reacts with uh, two pH3 that gives us Cu3 P2 plus three H2SO4. Same way, my dear students, if you have three HgCl2, it reacts with pH3 and produces Hg3 P2 and six HCl. So when this phosphine reacts with the copper sulfate and mercury sulfate. We get copper phosphide and mercury phosphide. This is how we can get it. Now, phosphine is weakly basic and like ammonia, and it gives the phosphonium compounds with the acids that we have already seen. That if our uh, phosphine reacts with HI, phosphine when it reacts with HI, my dear students, it gives us. PH4I, same way phosphine, when it reacts with HBr, it gives us PH4Br, same as ammonia, when it reacts with HCl, gives us NH4Cl. So as ammonia is having the lone pair on nitrogen, this phosphorus is also having lone pair on nitrogen. And due to these two reactions, we can say that our phosphine is basic in nature and it, it gives the uh, uh, proof that phosphine is a Lewis base or basic in nature. 
Now, my dear students, we are going to study the various uses of phosphine. So let us uh, study the various uses. Various uses of phosphine. One use I have, you know, I have shout about it, and that was its use into the Holmes signal. So let let us discuss each one, each use of this uh, phosphine one by one. Let us try to understand uh, the uses phosphine. The uh, spontaneous combustion of phosphine is technically used into the harm signals. So that is what I have repeatedly told you that it is used into the harm signal, my dear students. Now let me tell you what is this harm signal. So uh, see, container containing the calcium carbide and calcium phosphide are pierced and thrown in the sea when the gases evolved burns and serve as a Holmes signal, it is also used into the smoke screens. Second one is the smoke screen. So first, let me tell you about the Holmes signal, my dear students. Let's first study about the Holmes signals. You know, if you have ca 3 p 2 and ca 2 Ca3P2 is known as the calcium phosphide and CaC2 is known as the calcium carbide. Please remember, this is calcium phosphide. This is what it is known as the calcium carbide. Now this mixture is used for harm signals. This mixture is used for harm signals. Now what happens, suppose you are having your own boat and you are sailing into the sea. In sea some place, if you find some danger, so the place you find it is dangerous, dangerous place. So you want others not to go there. You want others not to go there into the dangerous place or you need help. And you want to attract the other sailors into the sea. What you will do? You will take this and you will pierce it. You will pierce it means you will make holes into it and allow it to fall into water. When you allow it to fall into water, my dear students, what happens? This Ca3P2 and CaC2 reacts with water. We have seen that CaC2, Ca3P2, when it reacts with water, it produces calcium hydroxide and phosphine. When calcium carbide reacts with water, actually it produces C2H2 and CaOH twice. So this is what it happens. This C2H2 is nothing but your C triple bond CHH, that is ethyne. It is also inflammable, highly flammable. We have already seen that pH3 when it falls in water, we have seen that pH3 when it falls in water or aqueous solution of phosphine, this is the aqueous solution. In the presence of light, what happens? In the presence of light, it produces the compounds like P2H4 and hydrogen gas. So these two substances along with this they start burning and show flame. They produce flame, my dear students. They start showing the flame. This you will see 
that the water is burning please remember you will see this flame as if the water is burning but actually the gas like ethane and hydrogen gas and p2h4 they collectively burns when they react with water because huge amount of energy is produced and this huge amount of energy produced because of the reaction of ph3 with water they catches hydrogen gas catches the fire this ethane gas catches the fire p2h4 is also responsible for the fire and this flame what you can see my dear students this flame what you can see in the water of sea gives signals to the other people that either they can come to you and help you or you may be give sign that they should not go there so you can say please do not go there or you can say come here and help and thus we can say uh, it is a it is used into the horn signal apart from that it is used for the smoke screen now what is this my dear students so during the army operations my dear students sometimes what happens you don't want your enemies to know your activities so in that case what you do you produce some smoke and under that smoke the enemies don't see you and you do whatever the activities you want to do this kind of screen is known as the smoke screen and thus my dear students to produce such smoke screens or to produce or to make your enemy unaware of your activity this smoke screen is produced and with this smoke screen there are some substances needed which produce the burning into the eyes of the enemies and they may be some poisonous so to create the trouble to the enemy this phosphine gas is used to make smoke screen so that so that uh, by putting some harm into or by creating some harm for your for the enemies this smoke screen is produced and we can have or uh, the the army people can have the better operations so now i hope my dear students you are uh, you have understood about the smoke screen even dear students do you have any doubt no, about school. the horn no, screen no, yes sir sir no, no. smoke screen no doubt sir okay no doubt sir uh, now i would like you my dear students to know or if we can if i can show you some video let us uh, look into the video for some smoke screen or for some uh, you can say the uh, holm signal if you can see something holm signal if you can see some uh, yes this is what you can see here uh, can you see the screen about holm signal my dear students yes yes sir. See this is unnecessary advertisements. So let's have a look to the home signals. Dear students, can you hear the voice of computer, or I need to give commentary? No voice. Oh, okay, no problem. I shall tell you. You can see that a boat is sailing into the sea. and you want to give signal to someone so you have this containers see this is the container in which you have the uh, mixture of uh, calcium phosphide and uh, uh, carbon uh, calcium carbide you can see that there is a hole on the top of it you can see the hole on the top of it this container containing calcium phosphide and calcium carbide See, you can see that these are thrown into the sea. You can see this person has thrown them into the sea. So, what happens when they are when they are thrown into the sea due to the hole? You can see that this water enters into them. See, this water is entering. You can see that when this uh, react with water, it produces acetylene. Acetylene is nothing but your ethane C two H two. 
and you can see that even phosphine is being produced and due to that some burning flame has been started now you can read my dear students can any of you read this for me any one of you phosphine that in in bitter spontaneously reduces to in bonded with air and also it it needs acidity yeah the same i have even explained that phosphine gets ignited spontaneously as it comes in contact with air and also ignites the acetylene acetylene is nothing but your ethane and you can see the flame has started so you can see that this bright red flame can be seen on the surface of water please understand this bright red flame can be seen on the surface of water not only the the flame but my dear students huge amount of smoke is also produced with this flame so this serves as a signal to the approaching ship that this place may be dangerous or in this place someone need help you can see the equation i think we have written both these equations so this is how my dear student we study about the uh, various rea uh, the various reactions or various things that is uh, related to the horn signal now my dear students let us try to study about the smoke screen smoke screen what is smoke screen let us understand uh what is a smoke screen let us try to understand i think this is what it is the best video that tells us about the smoke screen see this is the wonderful example of smoke screen my dear student see my dear students there is a plane flying in the air and that produce some gas you can see that that gas is falling on the earth and as it falls on the earth my dear students it produces something that you cannot see through when this smoke is produced you cannot see through see from the air you can see the smoke screen in this manner so this is how my dear students we can see the various examples of the smoke screen so when the smoke screen has been created then the bomb bombarding was being started same way my dear students if i can show you something else some more idea of smoke screen i hope there is no advertisement uh coverage coverage come 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 let us wait for uh, some time
have you seen my dear students the smoke has been suddenly produced bachcho aapne dekha smoke produced hua yeah this is what it yes, caused the smoke sir sir so my dear students when the smoke screen is produced 